Um, so we can go ahead and switch then to near and dear to my heart, um, some peri-op gabapentin discussion. Uh huh. Absolutely. Is it really near and dear to your heart? I or? love pain management. Oh, you do? Well, I love old people. Okay. So, so. this was going to work out well. I feel like a friendship has just been born. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, yeah. So um, this is a, a study that uh, looked at whether or not the routine use of gabapentin after major surgery in older adults causes harm. Is it safe, et cetera? Um, it came out in JAMA Internal Medicine in September of 2022. Um, and it really, uh, why is, I think it's important to sort of delineate for those of you out there who don't do a lot of perioperative medicine that uh, gabapentin is increasingly being utilized in multimodal pain control regimens. And that often is seen in elective orthopedic surgery. It's seen in enhanced recovery after surgery protocols, et cetera. So it's being lumped in with opiates, Tylenol, um, and gabapentin and, and a number of other agents. Uh, and, and it's been done in sort of a sweeping way where they're not thinking about who they're giving it to. And, and we know as internists that older folks have different responses to some of these medications and gabapentin is no exception. And so this group did a retrospective cohort study. They looked at about 238,000 patients who had undergone surgery from 20, 2009 to 2018 and were over the ages of 65, and they compared, actually they had the propensity match these patients, um, but they compared patients who had received gabapentin um, in post-op day zero to two as a new uh, medicine to them, they couldn't have been on it before, versus those who did not receive that. And um, their primary outcome was delirium, they were looking, um, and again, because this is a, a database a study, they, were, they had to use a validated claims-based algorithm to identify delirium. And they also looked at antipsychotic use, which can predict delirium, as well as pneumonia and, and in-hospital death. And they found that um, overall, not surprisingly, there's about a 30% increase in delirium rates in patients who were getting gabapentin after surgery. So 3.4% versus 2.6%. There were also very small but statistically significant increases in antipsychotic use and increased rates of pneumonia in this same population. So um, I think, to me, this was one of those thank you for telling me what we already know studies. Um, it just gives you a little bit of something to send in an email to the orthopedist. Um, uh, but... I, I was happy to see this study. I think better data is probably needed overall for us to make a huge change. Yeah. And um, I, you already said this, but I just want to highlight it. Like the study was really looking at people who are not on gabapentin already, but not like the like 95% of our patients who are somehow already on gabapentin when they come in. Um, <laughs> not always sure Which why is really on. sad. I, th I, don't, I didn't mention that a lot of um, people who get these surgeries and are on gap, placed on gabapentin are actually still on them three months after their surgery, which is ludicrous because that is not how it's been studied. But that is, a, that is one of those unintended downsides to just routinely prescribing these meds. This is like a complete zag from what you guys just talked about. But, and I, I think I have an idea of why, but like they pick pneumonia, which I found to be kind of random. Is this assuming that, that it costs like aspiration or I, I'm, this is just me being like, I don't. I thought yeah. the same thing. There's nothing wrong with you. I thought the same thing. It is, they, they, if you dig into the paper, it is the presumption is that you're going to have more aspiration in a delirious patient. And okay. so that's why they pick that. But you can imagine like, it is sort of like often left field, you know. The vast majority of these patients were uh, elective surgery, remember? And uh, so they're not gonna be like coming to the ED with a p potential infection. So it would be unusual for you to develop pneumonia unless potentially you had some micro aspiration. Yeah. They excluded anyone who was needing the gabapentin for another reason too, um, like during the stay. Yeah, okay. Yes, they did, yeah. Um, okay. Anything else, Dr. Amin? No, that pneumonia thing was just bothering me. Thank you for <laughs> validating my confusion. I very much appreciate it. 
I'll just highlight it. I feel like um, I've gone to a couple of the pain talks too during this conference, and that's also been kind of the resounding message um, that we're prescribing gabapentin a lot um, in our patients. Um, But whether the data is really all there for all of the indications is kind of up in the air. Well, there's pain, consensus pain guidelines by like anesthesia, pain system, American Pain Society. There's a, and, and those, um, Guidelines will talk about NSAIDs and say th- these are indicated in certain types of perioperative pain, et cetera. Um, and then they have a caveat, but uh, come with come at risk for patients with AKI, or they say be careful and choose your selection. They don't do that with gabapentin. They do that for opiates. They do it for NSAIDs. And gabapentin's like a free for all. It's like hey, it's great, you know, no no, no harm, no foul. And uh, I, I think you know just. Exercising a little caution is what we're asking for. We're not saying don't give it. You're kind of describing, I feel like, the way we talked about tramadol for a while. Exactly. You know, like yeah. I remember when I was in med school dating myself um, where like everybody got tramadol yeah. because it was like not <laughs> opiates and stuff. Totally. And here we are talking about gabapentin in a similar way, I feel. So I don't know. So at the talk I was just at, um, Gabapentin is the second most prescribed medication at the speaker's hospital, and the first is tramadol. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Probably behind those, there's some nefarious advertising somewhere that's making that happen. Yeah. Wouldn't know anything about that. 